there's this up and coming politics slash Valorant streamer called um, Hasanabi. And it turns out that he had Marion Williamson uh, on stream recently. Isn't that cool? So uh, you're you're interested in beefing up the NLRB and uh, giving more power. Didn't she recently say something anti-vax? That was like a decade ago. No, as I understand it. There's another person who claims to have outsider status, but of course is from like a political lineage family. I'm of course talking about RFK Jr. Uh, what are your thoughts on his campaign so far? There's one place where he and I agree, and it's the only place where I've found that we agree. We certainly agree on the issue of agency capture. Um, and the marriage of, you know, government and corporate power and how basically that is a fascistic element. He certainly and I certainly agree on that. On the other hand, I don't understand how that is married to his belief that, you know, as he says, he's a free market capitalism. Exactly. Guy. That's exactly what I said. He LARPs as like an economic populist. But then if you take he's like, oh, well, corporate capture. But then if you take a look at his economic policies, he's like, well, he's how can you be free market? But also this is like a libertarian delusion, which is the idea that collusion between the state and corporations is anything other than the free market. That is the free market. Whenever you don't have regulations, that's what happens every time. Obviously, in a free market, they will immediately seek to collude with the most powerful local institutions. And if there is no government, they will become the government. People are uh, correctly pointing out that he's done a lot of uh, weird things. I mean, he, he gained a lot more prominence in recent years through anti-vaxxer conspiracies, through those circles, QAnon and whatnot. Some uh, Oh, you could actually see... You could actually see Marianne right there going like, oh, here we go. Of the uh, Some of the writing that has been conducted on your campaign so far have also had uh, a little bit of not necessarily claiming that you're an anti-vaxxer, but definitely uh, there is uh, some questions about that. What are your stances on vaccination? Well, the thing I do agree on is that I don't think pharmaceutical companies, listen, I don't think that insurance companies should be dominating our, uh, whether or not we have health insurance. I don't think uh, pharmaceutical companies should have the dominance they have. I don't think gun manufacturers or big oil or big uh, chemical companies or big food companies or defense contractors should be dominating our policies. I, I think too often, obviously, uh, the profits of pharmaceutical companies are placed before the actual health and well-being of the American people. So, okay, so this is this is obviously true, but that's not a vaccine thing. That's a pharmaceutical company thing. It's perfect perfectly sensible to be anti big pharma but usually when the right says they're anti big pharma what they mean is they're anti vax and when people on the left say it they usually mean they're anti big pharma right people on the left tend not to be anti vax that's one that's one thing that there hasn't been like some weird horseshoe theory crazy like parallel on which is for the most part people on the left are pretty consistently okay with vaccines you know, uh, uh but obviously that varies like Jimmy Dore is anti vax even though he pretends that it's anti big pharma you know there's variants in no other advanced democracy do they lack universal health care. So you take the top five pharmaceutical companies last year alone, and their profit was $80 billion. Meanwhile, we have people rationing their insulin in this country. We have, pe we have people who are putting GoFundMe pages on the internet to pay for life-saving operations. This is all true. She is still dodging the question, of course. ...for themselves and their loved ones. Uh, so, no, I'm not a big fan. I mean, obviously, there's profit, and then there's profiteering. And I believe that uh, there's a lot of profiteering going on on the part of Big Pharma. And I, I think there's a healthy skepticism that all of us should have. But in terms of uh, <clears throat> vaccine science, it feels like, to me at least, and I'm... Okay, Hassan correctly recognizes the pivot. I'm proud of him. The, the layman, I'm not very intelligent. It seems like uh, the people that are supposed to be ensuring that every single person is inoculated, uh, the, the science behind it seems sound to someone yeah, like and myself. And there's risk associated with every vaccine, and we know that. Yeah, so overall, I, I feel as though it is an objective good. I mean, even Donald Trump with his Operation Warp Speed, this is one of the Absolutely. few instances where I feel like uh, this was the government operating in a way that it was supposed to. And there was definitely negative consequences associated with that, but that wasn't necessarily... Yeah, if you have beef with the pharma companies, the vaccine is the worst thing to go after because that was actually like the biggest medical marvel fucking ever. Seriously. Literally, like, a new disease has been identified. The government is going to, like like you know all of you try to make a vaccine as best you can go 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 we're going to provide it for free once you do running around and then like like less than a year later you know yeah 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 in like no time it's like okay every american gets free vaccines it's like, holy shit you know so quickly we have gone to the point, gotten to the point now where the, the skepticism has become cynicism and it is too much. The system is too saturated because we have to have enough trust in these agencies. Now, whether it's the CIA or, or the CDC, it's sort of the same thing. It's like, do we trust you people? So we have- It's also about like informed trust, right? So I think that cynicism with the CDC is okay if the cynicism was like, hey, I think that the CDC has a degree of corporate capture with like big pharma, and I think that their motivations might be skewed sometimes when it comes to profiteering. That's one.
But then when your cynicism has gone to a point where you're saying, yeah, like actually the vaccines are all ineffective and they're all going to kill you. Guys, there is a significant portion of the country that believes that the vaccine is killing a bunch of people and that it's like basically deliberate. Can somebody explain to me why anyone, the US government, big pharma, who, who, whatever, would want to just randomly kill a bunch of people in this country, thereby having fewer voters and customers and everything's, why would they do? Because that's like stupid cynicism. That's like, that's like the conspiracy bay right there. I don't think it's conspiratorial to say government institutions tend to be favorable to big corporations. Cause like, you know, look at history. Uh, but if you're start, if you're, if you're running it to a point where it, it doesn't even make sense anymore, you know, it's about informed skepticism. You know, you're right, Crane. It's, they don't understand how society and incentive structures work. They just don't get it. Maybe you don't like me for whatever reason, Can, whatever, uh, for, you know, this, these narratives that are spun or kooky, wacky, whatever, uh, which is, I don't think there's anything kooky or wacky about 68,000 people dying every year from lack of health care, 18 million Americans unable to fulfill their prescriptions, um, 85 million under or uninsured Americans. And no, I have no crystals in my books or in my home or in my lectures. So if people can't see through that, I, 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 I love crystals. <clears throat> I, I have. Good. I don't know where they're at. I wanted to, I wanted to ask. <laughs> Hassan's like, I understand your argument about taking this seriously, but at the same time, I'm not going to drop the crystal mommy thing. Your they're, they're opinion, not but you you're cookie, not cookie if you have them in your well, house. sexism. That's why I, oh. I do have the OP buff of being a dude, so they don't really, uh, I don't Thank get you hit for with saying that. It, sir, dude. Yeah, that's just you know, but crystals are great. Um, okay, so I didn't realize, I mean, I thought that you were uh, a, a uh, crystal mommy, is what uh, people are calling yes, you, you in a, in a, in a not bad way, in a good way. Spawn. Well, if I. It wasn't necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, well, but it has been used to minimize. Let's not kid ourselves. Okay. All right. Well, uh, w I didn't realize that you were, uh, you had no interest in crystals whatsoever. Well, I think they're pretty. I mean, okay. I, you know, I certainly think they're pretty. All right. Well, I mean, look, I'm, I'm honest. I, I had to say it, chat. I know Chad's like, why did you say that to her? Well, I mean, like, like I've, <laughs> no, I, it's good. It's good I've succumbed to the media I'm a, narrative. I'm a big girl. I can handle it. We can I, talk. I've succumbed to the media <laughs> narrative myself. I'm going to skip ahead to Israel, Palestine to see if anything funny happens. And after that is Ukraine. Now, that $3.8 billion in uh, military aid, there is a memorandum of understanding. So that's there unless there is a Congress, an act of Congress to, uh, to pull that back until 2028. However, the president can and as president- Thanks, Obama. Pardon? Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you. Uh, that, as president, I would uh, absolutely and could, by the way, the power would be given me uh, to insist that that money not in any way be used in a way that transgresses human rights as we as we um, stand for them or purport to stand for them. I don't think that can really be done. Get, putting like earmarks on huge cash donations like that, like, oh, don't use this for bad. I don't I don't know how much that ever works. The problem is like, it's not just the, the weapons that Israel has. It's that let's be real here. OK, Israel's culture is just rotten. You can go over there and it's like ask people in the street, you know, like, hey, do you think that pal Palestinians are like rats or vermin? They're like, yeah, dude. Yeah, man. Like, se like, seriously, he's you take a look at polling data when it comes to stuff like that in the country. Like, it's not just the government. It's that Israel itself, the, the population of Israel is as like callously, uh, uh, you know, uh, indifferent towards the light, not just indifferent, but malicious towards the, the, the lives of, of Palestinians. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's it's a broader issue that needs to be addressed, you know? It's like addressing, it's like addressing racism in the United States. It's it's not just you pass a bill, you know, more has to be done than that, a lot more. Um, personally, I think that international force to secure the protection of the Palestinian people would be a pretty obvious thing, right? We intervened uh, to keep Serbia from genociding all of the uh, Kosovars, but obviously we, we can't do that with Israel because they're an ally and a nuclear power. By the way, like, nobody in the government, like the administrative state, not the politicians, actually thinks of Israel as an ally. Israel constantly spies on us, does OPSEC checks for, for our influence, and, and does, like, PSYOP shit on us. We are not allies at all. <laughs> we don't, you know... We don't treat each other that way when it comes to the actual like engagement of our departments with each other. A place where I deeply disagree uh, with the President Biden is on the use of a cluster. Cluster munitions, bombs. Those yeah. munitions are evil. They are obscene. Uh, they are illegal according to 122 nations, and they should be according to ours. So my heart is really broken, and uh, we should not be using cluster bombs. And I think Americans need to realize what they mean because they, they have repercussions after a war is over. Children, other innocent uh, civilians killed by them, uh, they don't all detonate at you know, the time that they. Yeah, the main thing that shifted me on this is that Russia is already using them. 
because the problem with cluster bombs is that a bunch are left unexploded, but Ukraine is already, uh, yeah, a landmine field full of unexploded cluster bombs, you know what I mean? So, like, the introduction of them to a conflict where previously they weren't there is one thing, but when half of Ukraine is already mined to fuck, I, I feel like, you know, because they're like cluster bombing areas that are already flagged for being cluster bombed, you know, like, like, like Eastern Ukraine and stuff. So it's not like civilians are just going to run through there freely as they have before. You know what I mean? I will say this. No, of course, the United States does not have clean hands. Uh, yes, the United States was, you know, pushing too far east with the whole NATO thing. Nope. Yes, the United States, or no, I should say, we should not have had the Aegis missiles in Poland. However... We should have had more. This is where I differ from a lot of my friends. None of that, to me, justifies Vladimir Putin's uh, invasion of a sovereign country. I would like to see it be a negotiated settlement in which Ukraine has any Ukraine to negotiate. Yeah, uh, the, pro the, the problem with this, the people always say this, right? The problem with this is, negotiate what? This isn't a complicated conflict from a from a moral perspective. Like, what what is there to negotiate? You know, there was a fifteen point plan negotiated in Turkey in uh, in the earlier version of the invasion that seemingly was uh, a little bit more prosperous. Zelensky is himself even conceded to uh, pushing Crimea later down. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to like a like a fifteen year program for Crimea where he would like have then they would have to do another war, another democratic vote on mm -hmm. how, dude. Democrat, you really think that Putin would let Crimea be voted back into another country? That they would they would let Ukraine do like a proceduralist annexation, like 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 through a vote? Also, can't you tell Russia's being disingenuous with the peace agreements if they're initiating peace talks right after doing the invasion? Like, doesn't that strike you as a little bit like, oh, maybe they're playing a game here? Why, why would they invade and then go like, oh, well, here's these like peace. Listen, we're pro peace and we have these peace agreements and like, come on. To uh, best continue on with those negotiations, yeah. that all fell apart when Boris Johnson. This is the 15 point plan that has, oh, Hassan's about to say some right bullshit. Hold on. Boris Johnson did not like destroy peace talks for other countries. Zelensky was never going to accept a peace agreement that didn't involve the retaking of all of Ukraine. So none of this is worthwhile. This is that's total bullshit. The idea, the idea that Boris Johnson was just like, "Hello, mate, don't don't do the peace agreement, all right?" And that just like Zelensky is like, "Oh, okay," like it's, it's just ridiculous. They always, it's always with people like Hassan, fucking the, the, to all the people on these talking about. It's always like the West is always the ones responsible, man. Holy, it's like all the time. It's like listening to far right people talk about Israel and APAC, you know, like, oh, you know, th this one time a big oil company did something that was kind of greedy. It was like, actually, that was APAC and Jewish people. It was, well, was it? Was it actually? You know, it's, it's, it's everything. Is everything the West with you? Hassan visited uh, Ukraine, and I don't think that uh, England has any sort of agency in this conversation beyond uh, operating as a mouthpiece for the American yeah, State Department. And... Everything is the West. Everything is the West. Everything is the West. And there's that interview with Naftali Bennett and so forth. So Wait, hold on. How can he simultaneously argue that China and Turkey should have a right to, like, negotiate peace agreements, but England can't? Wait, what? So, what, an authoritarian country that's, like, 2,000 miles from Ukraine, an authoritarian country that's, like, 1,000 miles from I'm way off the numbers here, but not a democratic country that's 2,000 miles off? Why not? You know, I look at American foreign policy over the last 50 years as... Toxic masculinity writ large. Cowboys going out, guns are blazing. So immature, so lacking in wisdom. We must learn how to wage peace and we must learn how to have a far more humble and respectful relationship with other nations. Okay, so you're, you're in disagreement with the current foreign policy perspectives on China that seemingly is bipartisan and it's like xenophobia, that China is uh, bad, evil, Well, there have been terrifying. some efforts when you- I agree about America being overly paranoid and xenophobic towards China. However, let's not pretend that China is not like gung ho cowboy yaw. They keep threatening to invade Taiwan. <laughs> they keep they're like building fake islands in the South China Sea to extend their international borders until they can like like completely cut off other trade. They're they're incredibly aggressive, far more so than we are presently. Um, at least in rhetoric. There's always been since the Nixon era the 
the American attitude towards China has always been like, yeah, we're going to we're not going to do anything. Uh, we are no longer recognizing Taiwan as the real China. It's just autonomous region while also simultaneously giving uh, arms to uh, Taiwan and trying to uh, massage any kind of uh, interest that there may be in the public. And oftentimes this is not dissimilar <laughs> to the uh, the Arab Spring, uh, real legitimate interest in emancipation or um, or uh, wanting to become independent, um, beefing up uh, these uh, different groups in a collaborative effort to utilize uh, an area with historic conflict, simultaneously claiming that uh, you're on board with we're, it. We're not using an area with historic conflict. Taiwan has been its own thing for, for over half a century now, and we have a defense contact with it. We're not, we don't exploit our relationship with Taiwan to like muscle in on Chinese territory or whatever. We just expect China to not fucking invade them. I think that's pretty reasonable. Okay, here's a question that you can ask anyone who pretends that Taiwan is the front for some kind of imperialist US venture into China. Why then do we not have military bases in Taiwan? Like, we have a defensive treaty with them. They're an ally of ours. We've explicitly stated that we, we will, like, defend them if necessary. Why don't we have military bases in Taiwan? The answer for that is because we're not using it as a fucking bulwark. All right, well, thank, thank you so you. much for coming. Thank you so um, much. Bye, everybody. I don't get. I'm never going to get an answer to this, man. Because whenever people want to talk with me about, like, the Russia-Taiwan thing, they're insane tankies. Hassan's not an insane tanky. I just don't get his, like, foreign policy takes. I, I don't understand it. I just, I don't, I don't, I don't get it.